So we're almost there already, halfway there. So the third question would be, well, if it's wrong and immoral to violently force your ideas onto other people, how is voting any different? Because in your day-to-day -day life, you use plurality of solutions to solve problems, right? You never use violence. That's not a choice you opt for immediately. And so government, like society, for example, society wants to solve problems too, and government says this is a way you can solve problems. They're voting. So everyone votes. And of course, when you vote, a politician is elected. A politician's job then, his or her only job is to legislate those ideas into laws. Those laws of ideas are not backed and enforced by the police at gunpoint. In which anyone who tries to resist or goes against those ideas is met with uh, arrest, kidnapping, uh, prison, and cage. And with any, any point they try to resist even further, they're met with more violence or even shot, murdered, right? And of course this whole system, you have no choice to, uh, to say, I want to support this, but I don't want to support that. You have to give them your money. Because if you don't, they'll come at you again and throw you in a cage that you don't pay your taxes, right? And if they could send us a snipes to jail, because he never pays taxes, they can certainly send anyone else, of course, but they don't pay their taxes, right? So there's another order for it. It's called extortion. So if you can see now the hidden violence behind voting, that this is a system that only knows how to stop fighting in one way, and it's with violence. They don't have plurality of solutions. It's even fun to even more violence through extortion. And that's the hidden violence behind that. Because you yourself don't use violence to solve problems in your day to day life, but this is the hidden violence that government hides from everyone else. And instead, when people vote, it's not a piece of paper you put in the ballot box, it's a gun. It's consent. You pass it to the politician, you pass it to the police officer who does the violence for that person. Right? Um, so, of course, like the, the solution, and you can see that violence will never set us free. The government only keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and we keep losing more and more freedoms. And the only thing, really, that you can do is to do what you already do in your day-to-day -day life. You don't use violence. You stop participating in the system of violence. It only knows how to solve problems to violence, right? You use plurality of solutions in your life. When you want to get to freedom, you have to actually go and engage people. Talk to your friends, talk to your family, talk to strangers about this stuff. Talk to people. You can change one person in one day, right? You can create change in one day talking to people that you can every four years. When you draw the curtain, when you pull the lever and punch that shad in, and when you step out and someone says, who'd you vote for? You say, how dare you? How dare you? That's a personal issue. And then they slap the I voted sticker on their shirt and no one talks about it, right? And it just continues and continues and continues. And uh, so I'm, just, I'm out here really just to talk about the hidden bias behind voting. Just people to consider it, right? To, go, I mean, to reconcile your objections to violence, to which you do in your day-to-day -day life, with the hidden bias that this does. If you can see that, right? Oh, that's great. Do you have any questions? or? What do you think of that? Yeah? Yeah, Oh, that's wonderful. I'm Cal, by the way. I'm Anthony. Anthony, yeah. pleasure. Nice to meet you, man. Yeah, you too. No, I, I definitely agree. I actually identify with a lot of animal from the business. So. Yeah? yeah? Oh, that's great. That's, yeah, that's yeah. great. But Richmond's like a hotbed, I've been definitely. realizing. You know? Definitely. No, I I agree more. It's good to see somebody talking about it. It's not like much of a couple of the hard men have this, like, this guy's going to be looking out for the men. Yeah, I agree. Talking to people is what's going to change this. The protests and yelling at each other and rallies, they only end up in more arrests, right? No, exactly. I mean, it brings attention to the issue, but in the long run, it can be counterintuitive. And like, you really need to just like, people need to understand like how important that community is. And like, if you don't talk to other people, you just think you're going to solve problems by like yelling and screaming and throwing things at cops. And, like, it's not. It's like, it's like it may be right, uh, feel right at the time, but. It's not always. Yeah, you create a barrier, right? There's no open dialogue of discussion. There's no bringing those people on the other side back to you, right? Yeah. Their fear of flight responses and it kicks up and then all of a sudden it's in the air out the order and there's no way to communicate, to talk about violence, to talk about the hidden violence and how all this violence will never set us free, right? And, and that's the first step, right? Just talk to people about it. That's what set us free, not to uh, have this illusion of freedom that's going to happen every four years and we can only hope for change, you know? Oh no, it's wonderful. No, thank you so much, Anthony. Yeah, thank absolutely. Have a good day, man. Good luck with everything. Thanks, man.